Okay, so I think uh, it's time. So should we start now? I would say we we'll wait for a couple of minutes right. more. Yeah, please go ahead. Maybe another two to three minutes you can wait. Okay, so we we'll start at uh, three. Two. No problem. Yeah, and uh, you try sharing your slides or your screen. Yes. Yeah, visible. Good. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Shall we start the session now? How is it? Yeah, I think we can start. Okay, that's good. Uh, so welcome to the second day of the session. So uh, it's recording has been started or how is it? Yes, recording is being started. Okay. Okay, that's good. So welcome to the day two of the session. Uh, uh, today we'll talk about uh, how to model optical waveguides, uh, fibers, and couplers. So basically, what we will do is uh, we will uh, start to model with, for example, you 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 may be interested in a optical fiber. So if you see an optical fiber, it looks something like this. <clears throat> So you have uh, the core uh, and the cladding. So the internal part is a core and the outer uh, domain is the cladding. And there are two ways to look into this uh, in the way of uh, numerical modeling. So you, you can either actually have a, a longitudinal cross section. For example, it could be a cross section like this. Okay. So you have a plane which is longitudinally cutting or you can either have a plane which is cutting in a transverse manner like this. Okay. So apologies for my poor drawing. So it could be something like this. This is a longitudinal cut to this plane and this could be the transverse cut that I'm doing. So the longitudinal cut uh, that you see could lead to, if I see from the top, for example, so <clears throat> let me just type it over here. So this is the longitudinal cross section. And this is the transverse cross section. Fine. So the longitudinal cross section will lead you to something like this. You see from the top, it would be something like this. So your inlet is going to be over here and your outlet is going to be over here. So this is the longitudinal cross section, how it looks like, like you see from the top of this optical fiber. And then you have the transverse cross section. So if you see the transverse cross section, uh, you will see something like this. 
Okay, so both the ways you can actually model uh, in uh, console. Okay, so the best way again is always to use uh, 2D geometry as I'm, uh, I have done over here. So because again, as I, as I was saying that uh, electromagnetic simulations, uh, especially uh, optical simulations, uh, requires a significant uh, mesh. Uh, elements uh, as i said about yesterday uh, lambda by 5 by uh, the refractive index of the domain so it requires significant number of mesh elements while especially you are working with the uh, order of uh, uh, optical frequencies in or, or optical wavelengths in order of uh, hundreds of nanometers like green light is around 530 or red light around 630 nanometers so those are very small dimensions and uh, you and and once you mesh your geometry as you will see today as you go on increasing the frequency, that is, as you go on decreasing the wavelength, your geometry becomes uh, more and more more uh, <clears throat> computationally expensive, and that will lead to a, a more time for computation, more RAM requirement. Uh, so, so it's always good that you actually do some kind of a simplification to start off with. Once you get your results. Uh, uh, good uh, intuitive results in your 2D geometry, then you can go ahead and make a 3D geometry out of it. The approach remains the same, that is most important. The approach of how you model the 2D as well as 3D remains the same. Okay, so let us start modeling uh, a 2D geometry, 2, 2D longitudinal geometry. So, what I do is I go to console, I go to file new <coughs> model wizard. So uh, I, I will encourage you guys to also do along with me. So I would be going a little bit slow. Uh, if at any point you have any doubt, please do not hesitate to stop me, interrupt me and ask your question. Uh, okay, so uh, one more point is uh, you can also model this optical fiber as a 2D axis symmetry geometry, for example, like this. Okay, so this is your axis of symmetry and then this is your core and this is your cladding okay so that is also a type of a approach that you can use like this so this is a 2d axis symmetry geometry so that depends on the type of mode you can choose which uh, geometry type you can uh, want to model for okay. so as of now i will do with a longitudinal cross section that is 2d geometry okay so i choose this two dimension and then as I discussed yesterday, I again choose this optics and I go to wave optics and I choose electromagnetic frequency domain that is EWFD interface. Okay, so I just click on this, click on add. And I click on study. <coughs> Nice. So what I am going to do is I, I want to see the wave propagation, right? So I want to give an input over here. So this is my input and this is my output. And I want to see my wave to propagate along this direction. Okay. So if it is a wave propagation that I want to model, then I need to use the frequency domain study node. Okay. So a frequency domain study node is available over here. So I need to use the frequency domain. Okay, any questions till now uh, regarding the model wizard? No, sir. Okay, looks good. So I choose my frequency domain and I click on done. So this is the first screen that uh, you will get. So the next thing is uh, to make this geometry over here. Okay, this geometry over here. So let us put few of the parameters. So it's always good that you parameterize your geometry uh, because once you make the parameterized geometry, then you can actually tune your geometry uh, anytime that you want using the parameters. Comsol has also a feature known as app. So you can actually make an app out of your model and share it very easily, maybe through a mobile phone or a uh, web browser. So let me use the parameter section to 
add few of the parameters so i add w slab that is the width of the slab that is around 5 micrometers okay you can see this is 5 micrometers again like yesterday 5 uh, and square brackets micrometers then you have h clad that is the height of the cladding that is around 7 <coughs> micrometers okay height of the core 1 micrometer so in, it's important that you use the same uh, parameter name that you've used here as well in the model itself so when you define the geometry use the same thing okay so if you have you maybe you even capitalize a particular letter then console will throw an error so it should you should, should make sure that the parameter name that you've used the same parameter you need to use while you define the materials or the geometry so my geometry parameters are over i need to now define the uh, refractive index so of core i am putting it as around 1.5 and for clad so n clad i am keeping it as around 1 okay just for the okay. simplicity of Rahul, doing this. you added a micrometer symbol there sorry how you added micrometer symbol there micrometers Sorry, uh, your question is not, uh, actually your voice is a little bit uh, not clear. Maybe you can speak a little slowly. Sir, how you added micrometer symbol there? Oh, micrometer is just right square brackets UM. That's okay, okay. UM. Yes. Thanks. Yes. So I'll wait for a few seconds for you guys to add this. Okay. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. yes sir, uh, for a standard single mode fiber, the coarse diameter is around 4 mic uh, micrometers. Yes, yes. So this is just for an example uh, to show you how the wave propagation, the port settings and all those things. Now, in the second example that I will talk about would be of uh, more towards uh, the actual fiber uh, dimensions. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I have also sent the parameter list in the chat box. So if you have any doubts, you can uh, use those. Beta. And the correct comma get to me hagnega mutnega si beta. Other Sikandar Kanekal? I am sorry, sir. I am sorry. No, this is really not acceptable, you know. So please make sure that. Otherwise, I will, you know, expel you out. Yes, sorry, sorry, no, sorry, section, sorry. Please make sure. Otherwise, I will expel you out. Okay. Okay. So, the one more question: Is there any way to write equations, parameters, and values used in a study to a text file? Uh, yes, you can do that. You can write. Is there a way to write equations, parameters, and values used in a study to a text file? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can save this. You can see that this is an option known as save to file. Okay, just click on save to file and then you can uh, maybe I can just uh, para meters and then you can see that <coughs> Let me just save it. Okay, sorry. So you can see over here parameters. So you can now see this is the same thing that you have entered. Uh, you can save it in the form of text file. You can also import uh, a text file into a parameters. Okay, you can click on this load from file. Now this could be a CSV format or a 
.txt format, any of the format, or like CSV format, not any, these three or four formats, you can use it to load that data into a parameter sheet. Okay, so I hope you guys have entered these parameters. So next thing, as you guys know, is to make the geometry. So let us make a longitudinal geometry. To do that, I use, I right click on the geometry and I click on rectangle. Okay, just right click on the geometry and click on rectangle. Okay. And I write the width as uh, <coughs> W slab and height as uh, H clad. And I click on build objects. Okay, so I've added a new geometry and I wrote the width as W slab and height as H clad. Okay, now the way how you define the geometry is based upon the position. So right now it's the corner. So the corner is uh, 0, 0 as of now. Okay, you can see over here by default it is 0, 0. This is 0, this is 0. So you can actually move this slab by moving the position of the corner uh, itself, right? But for simplicity, what I will do is I will instead of corner, I will make it center. Okay, this is a center option. Click build all. Uh, and then you can just click on this uh, zoom extends to make this uh, geometry in the center. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, it is showing error while inputting width and height name. I think double slap and slap. Oh, when you put the width and the height? When it is showing error? Yeah, it is It is coming in red. Ah, so if it is coming in red means it's, it's, it's the one over here and one over here is not same. Okay, so make sure, maybe you can just copy and paste it. For example, I added one over here, you see. Okay, so parameter, you need to copy the parameters, right? Yeah, you can copy it or you write it, but it has to be the same okay. name. Okay, if it is different name, then it will come in red color. So over here, you can see that it's showed unknown model parameter. That means it's a different uh, parameter name that we have mentioned over here. It's not the same as the parameter. Okay, so make sure either you write it correctly that is the same thing that you write or you copy paste. Okay, then this rate should not come. That is the most important one. Excuse me, sir. Sorry, yes. Uh, uh, sir, actually when I created this rectangle, no, it is showing like blank, uh, that gray shade, it's not coming. Will it be fine? Like, is there any problem? Uh, with can that? you click on the zoom extents and see, can, can you click on first click on build all object? Okay. Yeah, I yeah. And and then click on zoom extends. Uh, that rectangle, whatever is being formed, it is like blank. It is not filled with that gray. Oh, gray, but it it it's the outer black box is coming at least. Yeah, yeah, that rectangle it is seen. The outer box is seen. Which console version are you using? Six point one. Six point one. Okay. Yes, uh, whatever. The <laughs> what name. I am using is six point zero. So okay, I don't know if there is something new shared, that has been introduced. It. Yeah, no problem. That's, that's good actually. 6.1 okay. is uh, advanced version, which is definitely okay. good. So don't worry, it's uh, on. You are on the correct path. If you see okay. this, uh, uh, border is seen, sir. Border is seen. Yeah, that's good. So just make sure that this center is at zero. That is important. That this center has to be zero. So to make sure that you need to use the base as center. Okay. So Hi. now the center of your rectangle is zero comma zero. You can see over here. So this is center is now. 0, 0, Yeah, it is 0, 0 only, sir. Yeah, just make sure that. Okay, looks good. thank you. Thank you.
Okay, looks good. So the next thing is, so this is the outer cladding. Now you can just duplicate this. Just right click on the rectangle one and duplicate this. And instead of H clad, I can write H core and build all. Nothing else I need to change. Just I change the H clad into H core and uh, I just click on build all. So you can, sh you should be able to get a, the central uh, uh, core. So duplicating is one of the most simplest way to uh, create the geometry because you uh, all the position uh, as well as um, the other factors are the same. Okay, so uh, a quick raise of hands of people who have completed the geometry so I can know uh, I can follow up like how many people are doing it. Okay, that's good. Good. Okay. So yeah, I see at least uh, twenty people uh, doing along with me. That's good. Great. Cool. So the next thing is uh, the materials. Uh, so there are different ways of adding the materials. I can right click on material, add material from library. Okay. So on the right hand side, you can see the library window coming up, popping up. But what I want to do is I want to add a blank material right so if i want to add a blank material and then tie up a, a, a particular um, material property to do so i right click on the material section and i click on blank material <clears throat> okay just right click on the material section and click on blank material Okay, so by default, all the three domains that you have created would be selected by default. Okay, so you can actually give uh, a particular label name like cladding. And for the cladding, you have given the refractive index as n clad. It's the same thing that you can use n clad. That, that's the same thing that you have mentioned in your parameter section. And you can just deselect the central domain. So the top and bottom part is now the cladding region. So this is the same thing that we are uh, drawn over here. You can see this geometry. So we are trying to replicate this geometry. Okay. So the wave is going to propagate over here. Okay. Not over here. This is just to show you that a wave is going to propagate, but it's going to propagate in the central part. Okay, so I've added a new material. I wrote the label as cladding and I <coughs> wrote the uh, parameter of this uh, material as n clad, which I have defined in the parameter section. Okay, you can see this is n clad. I have defined over here as one. Uh, sir? Yes. Uh, why it is showing stop instead of this? Uh, green color check in front of this property refractive index. It is mm. showing stop. Uh, if you have not entered anything, then it will show stop. Uh, that means that you have to enter some material properties. Okay, now got it. Don't okay. enter the material properties. That means that uh, yeah, you need to stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's showing now. Yeah. So uh, only so once you enter the material properties, uh, these two uh, tick mark will come. That means that these two are the required essential material parameters and those two things you have already entered. Okay. Looks good. So next thing is to add the code. To do so, I will do the same. I will repeat the same step. Just right click on material section. I, I, I uh, create a blank material. Uh, instead of material 2, I write code. And then I select this central domain. Okay. And then I write uh, and core.
Yeah, so I think uh, one of the attendees, uh, Suraj, is unable to get uh, the three regions. OK, so uh, three domains. Uh, yeah, so just make sure that you have created this rectangle one. W slab, S slab, make it center and click on build all. OK, so uh, and then you go to the rectangle two, H slab, H core, uh, central base position, build all. Okay, once you uh, click on build all, you should be able to get this domain. So Suraj, if once you go to geometry, if you click on build all, are you getting this kind of a rectangular geometry in your graphics pen? Okay. But you have create so you just then just make sure that you click this zoom extend. Sometimes it it goes away. Uh, some sometimes like this it happens. Okay, so just make sure that you click on zoom extends. Then it will actually come in the center. Okay. So are you able to get your gra uh, graphics pane something over here? If you are un still unable to do that, then means uh, this there could be an issue of the uh, graphics uh, card. In that case, you need to again go to this file preference, as I said yesterday, file preference, graphics and plot windows. And instead of rendering as OpenGL, you need to change it to software rendering. OK. So sometimes this graphics card may not be uh, OK for you, uh, the one that you're using, which is not compatible. So you need to change this rendering to software rendering. In that case, you and then click on OK and then restart com console. Then you should be able to get this. OK, looks good. So I think you guys have created cladding and core. <coughs> OK, core is n core and cladding is n clad. This n clad and n core I have mentioned in in the parameter section. So next thing is applying boundary conditions. Now uh, to excite this domain, I'm going to use the port boundary condition. So how do I excite port? Just right click on electromagnetic waves frequency domain. And this option on is port boundary condition. Okay. Just click on this port boundary condition. Okay, once you click on the port boundary condition, you need to choose these three boundaries. Okay, now interesting part is that you need to choose these three boundaries. Now this is kind of something new because uh, you might have you might have think thought about that your actual wave excitation has to be somewhere over here, right? So it's events and then actual wave would be over here, and then it will events in kind of a um, wave propagation. So your actual wave is going to propagate something like this, okay, towards this side. So in this port setting, uh, specifically, spec uh, specifically when you do not know the type of mode that may exist. So your mode may be like dual mode or it could be a triple uh, uh, peaks may be there. So you do not know what kind of mode may exist. Okay. So if you do not know which kind of mode that may exist, you can use the type of port as numeric. And when you use numeric, you need to choose all the boundaries that you are trying to excite. Okay, so that's a approach that one needs to follow. And when you choose numeric, in the study node, we need to actually um, perform this boundary mode analysis to find this mode. Okay, so that, that is something at a later point that we will do. So I hope you guys have added a port boundary condition. Type of port as numeric. Okay, yesterday we did with periodic. That is to model infinite error domain. Okay, uh, infinite error and slab model also you can do with this using periodic conditions. You can do an infinite array of grating using periodic conditions. Uh, right now I'm not modeling an infinite domain. I'm modeling a finite domain. 
uh, and I'm trying to exit using a numeric port. Why numeric port? Because I do not know the mode that may exist. Okay. So I want the fundamental mode to exist. And that's what I'm going to search first. How I'm going to search? I'm going to search by applying a boundary mode analysis. So that is a kind of a study that I will add later on. So as I have added port one as an excitation, I need to also add one more port on the right hand side, right? Because my wave is going to enter from the left and it is going to uh, get absorbed on the right boundaries. So what I do for simplicity, I right click on port one and I duplicate. Okay. And instead of on, I will make it off. Okay. And I want to deselect this. So either you can left click on them or you can click on clear selection. And then you select these three boundaries again. Or not again, means these three boundaries you need to select. Okay, so I will wait for a few seconds for you guys to complete this port settings. Okay, so I hope you would have completed this port setting. That is port one has numeric on port on these boundaries and port two on the right hand side boundaries as numeric as off. Now you can see that the other boundaries, which is initial value, that is initial values of each node points within this domain is zero. And then you have perfect electric conductors. Now um, uh, I will talk more about uh, PEC uh, in the next sessions but as of now uh, what is going to happen is as i mentioned earlier you are trying to model like a electromagnetic wave something like this so it's a peak and it's going to die down somewhere over here okay so if you uh, plot this electrical field so the amplitude is almost zero over here so here it's some somewhat finite uh, value but over here it's almost zero so the way to truncate your geometry is to use this uh, PEC boundary condition, especially when the electrical energy is zero. So there would be no reflection back. Okay. You can also use PMLs as we discussed yesterday. Uh, but as of now, PMLs, what the issue with PMLs is that it increases the number of mesh elements. It increases the number of degree of elements hence and increases the time of computation. But yeah, there are multiple ways to do the same thing. As of now, to truncate the geometry, I'm using PEC boundary conditions. Looks good. Next is, um, <clears throat> I need to check if I have, uh, okay, I have not entered the operating wavelength. So for most of the fiber optic applications, I uh, usually use 1550 uh, nanometers. Just hold on, I'm getting an urgent call. Yes, sorry. Uh... So once you add this operating wavelength as LDA0 of 1550 nanometers, uh, you also need to go to frequency domain and then you need to change this one micrometers to LDA0. 
okay but don't click on compute as of now Yeah, so the next thing is uh, to add the, so uh, now we have added the frequency domain. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add uh, the boundary mode analysis. Okay, as I discussed earlier, the periodic port, sorry, the numeric port is just to know what, which, if it is uneven or uh, if it is, uh, like we don't know the type of mode that may exist. So they use a numeric type of port. Uh, the next thing is to, understand which kind of mode that may propagate you need to use boundary mode analysis so how do you add boundary mode analysis you just right click on the study one and then click on uh, study steps and then you can click on others and then there's a boundary mode analysis okay just click on that so i will show you again just right click on the study one go to study steps other and boundary mode analysis so you can see that there are two different options boundary mode analysis and mode analysis so mode analysis is when you do the 2d cross section or translation cross section but right now we are doing longitudinal cross section so when you're talking about longitudinal cross section or even 3d geometry okay if you're talking about 3d geometry you use you want to excite a numeric port so use boundary mode analysis as i show i will show you in the end of this session i am going to model 3d geometry a rib uh, waveguide and i'm going to use boundary mode analysis to excite my or to search my mode fundamental mode and that i will use to excite it through my optical uh, waveguide right so this is a boundary mode analysis in the next example i will also show you about mode analysis so this is boundary mode analysis. I hope you have added this boundary mode analysis. Now in this C constant by LD and naught, that is the wavelength, operating wavelength that I need to choose. Okay. And one of the most important thing is search for mode around the, <clears throat> you need to search uh, more or less near to the refractive index of the core. Okay, so whatever is the refractive index of the core, you need to put this because you, the modes are going to ex exist uh, near the uh, or within the core itself. So you need to search for modes around this uh, value, whatever is the refractive index of your core. This is a very important part over here. For example, you are modeling uh, hollow um, uh, optical fibers, for example. So in that case, it's the opposite. So it's a hole in the center of your optical fiber and uh, hollow core uh, optical fibers and you want your modes to be ex uh, existing within the uh, air domain cavity. In that case, it's the opposite. In that case, you need to write the uh, search for modes around the refractive index of the air that is around one or it could be a liquid. It could be a kind of a sensor that you are modeling. So it could be a liquid that is flowing or it's a moisture that is uh, present in the core through which this optical wave is going to propagate so whatever is that material that you think that is going to propagate that refractive index the, the refractive index of that material is what you need to enter in this search for modes okay so that's it with these boundary mode analysis i hope you have added it if you have any questions please do not hesitate to ask Sir, hello. Yes, hello? please go ahead. Yes, uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, okay, so sir, uh, can I write uh, in the search for modes around uh, this uh, a number, or uh, can I directly write the end core? Uh, 
there. Yeah, you can write encode. Okay. Same thing. Okay. Okay. But you cannot write a function. No, no. Okay. You cannot write an equation. Okay. Okay. You can write a, a number. Okay. okay. I don't know. Maybe uh, if if it is incorporated or not, any number. Uh, only number is possible. Whether it's a parameter, a parameter is also possible. But as I say, the equation or a function, I'm not sure yet if that is possible. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? Hello, uh, sir. Uh, I'm getting a few questions. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah, my, my, my voice is breaking. Sorry. I uh, submitted my questions. Sorry, your voice was breaking. I couldn't hear you. So, what the input power? Input power. Uh, so, input power is defined by the port condition. Here, I can see it's one watt per meter. Okay. So why it is per meter? Uh, per meter because uh, uh, this is a 2D geometry. Okay, so so out of plane thickness uh, we are not considering any out of plane thickness. So so uh, so in the post processing you can actually mention what is out of plane thickness. You can multiply it with those. So it could, but as of now it's been in easy words it's one watt is the power. You can change the power using this okay now from this uh, the electrical field is going to cal calculate it using this equation okay and from this electrical field your magnetic field is going to get calculated okay does that answer your question yes yes sir thank you so much okay so there are a few questions uh are we doing single mode analysis? Uh, as of now, yes, single mode analysis. Uh, if you want to do multi mode analysis, you can also do that. You can launch multiple modes also, for example. You can use multiple ports at these boundaries and you can launch two or three modes together. Fine. So you need to just duplicate this port one and use the same boundaries and keep on launching them. Right. Fine. So you need to add multiple boundary mode analysis for them and then the core uh, how so for each mode the uh, effective mode index would be different okay so uh, those values you need to change so that is a little bit more involved but i will discuss this in uh, the next example that i will talk about okay uh, okay what about B out input power. I think uh, I have answered that question. So a power is nothing but uh, it's mentioned over here. Okay. Uh, one more question is on the definitions. Uh, so th that is a little bit uh, different question. So maybe I will answer it after the end of this demonstration, so that we don't uh, break the uh, chain of discussion. Okay, looks good. So. First thing is for the boundary mode analysis for the port number one. So similarly, we need to also do it for the port number two. So I just duplicate the boundary mode analysis for port number two. That's it. So I just duplicate this boundary mode analysis. This is my duplicated boundary mode analysis. And I write port number, port name as two. Instead of one, I write two. So this is port one, this is port two. The rest, everything is the same. Okay. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to move this frequency domain below. So I can just right click on this or I can just pick and drop over here. Okay, the drag and drop in the bottom. Or I can use also uh, right clicking on this and move up and down. But the most important thing is that boundary mode analysis should be first and then the frequency domain. It also means that you first find the mode that may exist over here and over here based upon the 
material properties at these boundaries once you know the mode that may exist you can then propagate it through this optical fiber or any optical waveguide okay so this is the boundary mode analysis on this boundary boundary mode analysis on this boundary and then this is the third step that is frequency domain analysis okay so as you can see this is the first step this is the second step and this is the third step seems logical right okay looks good so that's it you can also see the mesh okay and you can also do a trial and check you can in, uh, decrease the wavelength okay for example from 1550 you can decrease to 1000 nanometers and you can see the mesh will also change so because you have used physics control mesh so that's it uh, we should be able to run the model just click on compute and you should be able to uh, see the wave propagating through this domain okay so you should see something like this so you can just write in the chat box how many people are able to see such kind of figures or some kind such kind of results Good, sir. Building is showing an error. Sorry, your voice is uh, breaking. Sir, mesh building is showing an error. It's not building. Okay, that's strange. It is showing three uh, triangular one error. Means, uh, what error are you getting? Three triangular one error. Very triangular one error and what is the uh, error name? What some what is the error? Something they would have mentioned, right? Uh, the the what is this error that you are getting? Um, are you getting something? Free triangular is like uh, that is internally uh, you will see this free triangular uh, that will come inside over here. But over here, something might be mentioned a little bit more in the settings. Okay. But, uh, if you do the steps what we have mentioned, I don't think so. You should get any error. Mesh is uh, okay. I don't know. One more thing that you may get issue is if you have forgot this writing micrometers. Okay. If you have written forgot using micrometers, then by default it will take in meters. So it will model for 5 meters, 7 meters, 1 meters, which is like huge geometry. So in that case, COMSOL will, uh, uh, will say that it's a very big geometry and then it will unable to draw, uh, build the geometry. But again, if you click on build all, then your system will got, get hanged and then you have to restart your computer and lose this session as well. So please don't do that. If you get an error in this mesh, don't click on build all okay okay so i i see that many people are actually getting the results uh yeah so surjit is saying that material definition is incomplete so please make sure that you have written this as n clad and zero in the cladding in the core you have written n core and zero over here you can just make sure that you have mentioned all this material definition. So cladding should be in the top and the bottom and core has to be in the center. Okay. So PL is saying that I'm not getting the results. Uh, it's showing something else. Okay. So just make sure if the material properties are correct. The values are also correct. And core is 1.5 and clad is 1. Refractive index is 1550 nanometers. Slab width is 5 micrometers. H clad is 7 micrometers, H core is 1 micrometers. And if you do all the step one by one, so I think it should be right, you should get this kind of results. 
And if you are unable to get the results, uh, no problem. You can just see this video once more. Right now, what you have plotted right now is the norm, normalized electrical field. That is nothing but you are plotting the, uh, this is nothing but equal to square root of E. x square plus uh, e y square plus e z square. So this is the normalized E field that is being plotted over here. Okay. But I want to, for example, only plot the E z part, right? I want to only plot the out of plane electrical field component. So in that case, I can just write E z directly and click on plot and then you can see this beautiful wave that is propagating through the core and then few of this events and waves that is being uh, uh, released uh, on the outer air domains okay now people also work on uh, some kind of uh, uh, sensors so they put some kind of a uh, analyte in this and based upon the antibody uh, reception, uh, this response actually changes. Okay. So if there is an antibody which fits in with a particular bioreceptor, then it actually can change the response of your figure. Okay. So that's something else. Uh, but yeah, so uh, just try to plot EZ. Okay. Again, you can go to animation. Uh, and you can click on player and then instead of stored solution you can use dynamic data extension repeat it forever and click on plot okay so you can see this wave which is propagating through this optical fiber you can uh, export it into a dot gif format and use it in your powerpoint okay so this kind of wave propagation within the uh, Opt core of the optical fiber. You can also see a 3D visualization as we discussed earlier. You can just right click on this surface plot height expression and you can see this visualization, 3D visualization. And then again, you can use the animation to uh, see the visualization of your uh, 3D plot now. So it's a phase dependent animation. So the phase of your, uh, uh, of uh, so it's like a, uh, each uh, frame is having its own phase from 0 to 360 and then it's just linked together to see this propagation of waves. So it's not a time dependent solution. It's a phase dependent uh, 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 animation. It indeed looks like a time dependent thing, but it's not. Okay, looks good. So I hope you are, uh, most of you guys are able to get this uh, results that's great to know okay so that leads to the second uh, session uh, that is second part of this today's session that is we are going to talk about uh, the actual optical fiber cross section okay so in, in this case uh, uh, what we are going to do is uh, i will go to the file new okay maybe i, I will create a new model that's better so I go to file new. Okay. So over here I go to, okay. Yeah, sorry. I, there was one more question about definitions that I need to answer. So the definition node over here is basically, um, a lot of things actually. <laughs> so it has to do a lot of things. For example, you can use, uh, <clears throat> selections to, uh, select a particular domain boundary. You can apply a probe, especially probe required when you are doing a time domain simulation. So that time probe is kind of more required and you're doing some kind of optimization. That time also probe kind of helps. Uh, Non-local coupling again is like kind of integration. For example, you want to integrate at a particular point. For example, you want to find a mode overlap. Okay, there's an integration of two different modes. So you have mode one, mode two, and then you try to overlap together. So integration you can do, you can do average, uh, maxima, minima, Extrusion is something like you want to uh, model a geometry in 2D and then extract the result into 3D. So those things, extrusion, uh, 
PML is what I already discussed. Uh, rest of the things are just uh, uh, extra notes, so you can just uh, self-explanatory. Okay, so and then functions. Uh, this is also very important. A function. It you can write your own equations like analytical equations or use interpolation function to uh, import from any other file. Uh, dot txt dot csv or a dot dat file or you can write, make any uh, um, function as a, as a gaussian pulse or a ramp or a rectangle or a, a random uh, waveform right? so there are a lot of um, ways you can actually make a function and you can use that function to define a material property for example or a geometry of your structure and then variable is a, a functional dependent uh, <coughs> parameters so it's nothing but parameters but now it can be a, a spatially varying parameters and all those things. So a little bit more enhanced features you can actually add. <clears throat> okay, looks good. So let us go to the next example. That is now we talk about uh, the optical fiber cross section. So this is something like a rib waveguide, ridge waveguide, optical waveguide on a silicon photonic circuit, uh, communication circuit. So all those applications. Um, now we talk about purely optical fibers. So in optical fiber over here, what do we have is uh, again we go to model wizard, and I choose uh, 2D geometry, geometry, and over here I again go to optics, wave optics, and use the same EWFD. Okay, so this is the EWFD interface. Okay, so okay, sorry, I, I think there's a question. Yeah, so in the question is uh, in the study note there are two mode solvers. Can you please say which one is for when? So it's which one is for which actually is uh, would be the uh, correct interpretation. The first mode analysis is for port number one. Second boundary mode analysis for port number two. Okay, so this is port number one, port number two. So each of them, because they are numerical type of ports, you require it a boundary mode analysis. Fine. That's good. No, so sir, actually, I'm asking about the sorry? AR pack and feast. I was asking okay. about the mode this solver one. AR pack and feast. There are two types. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is an internal way to calculate the mode analysis. You can use the default AR pack. Okay, if you want to learn more about the hmm. algorithms which is used to define the the uh, mode analysis, perform the mode analysis, you can just right click on boundary mode analysis and click on help. So there would be a, a section on the right hand side that will pop up, and that is true for any hmm. node. If you are not sure about any of this uh, point, just right click on that particular node and click on help. So there will be a pop-up that will come on the right hand side okay. and it will give you more detail about what are the internal hardwired algorithms and uh, uh, more features. But yeah, you can more or less, I've never used, I have not changed this mode solver. Um, I've always used the basic uh, default settings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, ARP. Yeah, as we discussed yesterday, means if it is difficulty with the solution, then you can use the uh, iterative solver or direct solver that you can in interchange. But uh, for mm -hmm. mode analysis, I have never faced uh, such kind of issue. Okay. So here you can see on the right hand side. Now each and every yes, section over here uh, has been discussed over here on the right hand side. So you can go through it, learn about more. Okay, that's good. Yeah, thank you, sir. That's good. So now coming back to our optical fiber cross section, transverse cross section, I have the 2D geometry, and then I go to optics, wave optics, electromagnetic wave frequency domain, and click on add. So this should come over here, right? Next thing is the study node. Now instead of frequency domain, I am going to do the mode analysis. Okay. So I'm going to use this mode analysis and click on done. Okay. 
is again we are still in 2D geometry. The last example I will just talk more about 3D geometry. Fine. So next again we need to add the parameters. To add the parameters, I write and clad as 1.4378 and core as 1.4457. R core that is the radius of the core as 8 micrometers R clad that is the radius, radius of the cladding as 40 micrometers and operating wavelength as 1550 nanometers okay I will share this also in the chat box So if you guys have any doubts, you can clarify it in the chat box. Okay. So this is the input that I have entered. Uh, sorry, the parameter that I have entered. Okay, I will wait for a few seconds for you guys to add these uh, parameters. Yeah, so uh, uh, one of the question is uh, why not 1300 nanometers? Um, yeah, uh, uh, you can use this frequency sweep, for example. We can do that. We can do a uh, wavelength sweep actually. Instead of frequency sweep, we can do a wavelength sweep and we can plot the dispersion curve and we can see the cutoff frequency and all those things. Okay, so those things also we can do. Mm, yeah. You should because with the mode analysis also you can plot for example yesterday uh, uh, okay uh, with mode analysis as well as the longitudinal cross section that we discussed some time back that also you can do a, a frequency sweep in that and get a dispersion curve yeah so yeah so the pulse would be more narrower in that in the case of 1300 nanometers yeah definitely you can uh, yeah, that is true. Means the Gaussian pulse may be also a little bit uh, more uh, narrow. Yeah, you can try it out. Yeah. Those things I are in our hand to play around with. That's good. Okay, so I hope you have added these parameters. So the next thing is to make the geometry. How do I make geometry? Is just right click on the geometry and click on circle. Okay. So over here I write radius as uh, 8 micrometers. Okay, just click on build all so you will get a surface of a circle of uh, radius 8 micrometers means a diameter of 16 micrometers. And then just duplicate this, oh, sorry not radius 8 micrometers you can just mention R core because you have already, already parameterized your circle, uh, your optical fiber so you can write R core build all duplicate the first circle and just write r clad build all and then just click on zoom extends and you can see this uh, particular uh, geometry Okay, so I will wait for a few seconds for you guys to uh, create this uh, transverse cross section of the optical fibers. 
again you can uh, change lot of parameters as i said earlier you can change this uh, radius operating wavelength radius of the core and cladding you can change to see the difference mode that may be existing within this optical fiber Yeah, for one one question we have from Priyank is uh, for mode study or for dispersion study in rib strip uh, web guide. Uh, are we uh, would we be using mode uh, mode analysis? Uh, I think you mean since all our transfer studies, yes, uh, you can use mode analysis and get the dispersion curve. You can get it. Uh, so if you see the yesterday, I have shared one anisotropic mode analysis uh, study. So in that case also, we have done the modal analysis uh, or mode analysis over here and uh, we have got the dispersion curves. So you can get that. So the so dispersion curve is nothing but the effective mode index as a function of wavelength or it could be as a function of the radius. So yeah. Uh, one question from Vipin is that I'm not getting two circles corresponding to R clad and R code. Okay, yeah, so yeah, as Sarika mentioned, you can click on zoom extends. Okay, so I think, yeah, then you should be able to do well. Next is uh, the material section. So, right, I, what I do, I right click on the material section add blank material fine uh, again i use the central domain and mention it as core and i write over here n core fine again i just duplicate it write uh, clad that is nothing but the cladding and i write and clad okay core and clad core and clad, cladding should be outside. Okay. So this is core and core, clad, outer domain, that is blue color and, clo and clad. Okay, so I will wait a few seconds for you guys to add the material properties and core and and clad. Okay, so I hope you have added this, uh, both the material properties. Make sure the core is in the center with N core and N clad is for the outer domain with N clad. With the electromagnetic waves, we don't do anything else. So PEC is applied on the boundaries. Okay, and uh, that should be fine because the wave, the mode again is going to exist. So if I do a cross section, so the mode is going to exist somewhere over here okay so in the center domain and it's going to die down uh, as i go on to the boundaries okay it's going to die down okay so so as it going going to die down there's no reflection that is going to happen okay reflection back so almost zero electrical field so so pc is okay no need to worry if there would have been some waves that would be present, events and waves that would have present over here, then you could have used PMS. But right now, I don't need to worry. So next thing is to go mesh and do not click on build all. Okay, 
if you click on build all then uh, your system may get hanged okay now the important part is that mode that is going to exist in the core of the fiber does not require the meshing of physics control mesh okay that is based upon the operating wavelength okay here the modes that are going to exist are independent of the uh, uh, lambda by 5 kind of thing so you can just make sure that you disable this use function over here and only then click on build all okay please make sure that you disable this use function uh, green tick mark over here and only then you click on build all okay. you do not need to have a because this is not wave propagation only for wave propagation you need a requirement of lambda by 5 this is a mode that we are going to visualize which kind of mode that may exist okay and the mode that may exist how can i know that uh, this mesh setting over here is sufficient to uh, visualize the mode okay so please make sure that you disable this okay so if you don't have the contributor field maybe he was using different uh, <coughs> uh, maybe a different version don't, don't no worries just make sure that you go user control okay and uh, over here somewhere uh, predefined normal should should be good yeah predefined normal the general physics is fine pre triangular remaining okay you can just go to user control instead of this control that also should be fine okay so you should get a simple mesh like this not a very refined mesh because if you go with the phase control mesh then it will use a lambda by 5 mesh that is not what we require so let's go to the mode analysis now so in mode analysis again we change this c constant by ld naught okay so you see over here i have changed this ld naught And I want to search for six modes. So just enable this num desired number of modes as six and search for modes around n code. Again, it's very important that we do search around where we want the mode to exist. We want the mode to exist near the core. So we use the refractive index of the core. I will wait for a few seconds for you guys to update this mode analysis and then we will proceed further. Okay, if you have any questions, please do let me know. Please do not hesitate to ask any question. Okay, so looks good. Just uh, hold on, I have an important call.
Okay, looks good. So uh, that's it. You just click on compute. Okay, but make sure again that uh, you do not have this uh, face control mesh because if you have this face control mesh, if you see the mesh is a simple mesh like this. If it is a more refined mesh, then your system will hang. Okay, then click on compute and you will get a nice mode like this very quickly. So let me know in your chat box if you are getting this kind of results. Okay, that's good. So I see what money is able to get. So I'll wait for a few seconds for you guys to get these results. Uh, sir, can you uh, repeat again what you mentioned? Like instead of physics, physics control mesh, should we have to use something else? Right. So you didn't do anything else. Means instead of physics control mesh, in this physics control mesh, this contributing node that is uh, you just need to disable. That's it. Okay. Uh, what I was talking about. Okay. So you can just use. I, if it is an older version, then you can use user control mesh. But make sure the mesh is not much refined uh, kind of, of lambda by five. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir, I have a question here. Uh, the thing is that, uh, am I audible? Okay. Uh, so it's thing is audible. that, uh, so uh, uh, there are, uh, suppose I, I was uh, looking for six uh, modes and the effective indices are different for each of these. Now, uh, when I was using PML around the webguide structure, then the uh, if the effective mode indices differ from uh, the results we obtain from uh, without using the PML, so what does it actually mean? Or what should really, I do? The that? PML should not change this uh, effective mode index. Hmm. Yeah, ideally, it should not change the effective because PML is only to absorb the radiations. Okay, but you, as you can see over here, if I just uh, see the fundamental mode that is uh, the last hmm. mode over here yes, okay? yes and i see this height expression you can see that the mode is existing in the center of the core it's hmm. almost zero in this uh, end so you can just show maxima minima it's almost hmm. zero in the ends hmm. so pml if you apply over here anyway it's not going to change the effective index should not change the effective index of this uh, optical fiber Okay. Okay. So, uh, if for if for any uh, particular mode, the effective index is being changed when I'm using the PML in the waveguide, does it uh, mean that uh, this is not a uh, correct mode or something? Like yeah. That? How much change is the is the is the is the in the uh, in the in the, in the uh, second decimal place or something? Okay. Like uh, so, then it's quite uh, quite less. Uh, it could be a numerical issue also uh, that might uh, lead to the difference. So it's not too much significant. But uh, what I would recommend is that uh, you need to first see uh, whether you require PML or not. Okay. So in this case, as you can see, there is uh, no requirement of uh, the PMLs. Okay. So you, do, you can do away with PMLs. It's not going to hamper your results uh, any further. Okay, so. okay, sir. Thank you. So repeat uh, material section was one of the questions. So core is n core, 
which is I have mentioned in the chat box. Cladding is nclad, and one more important part is that is this search for modes around uh, n core. So I see many people are getting the results. That's good. The mode I can is hollow in height expression. The mode I can is hollow in height. Yeah, so I just added a height expression. Uh, if we're having a hollow, means some or the other way you have done some mistakes. So please see this video again. Perhaps that will help you to resolve the issue. Okay, one more question is I have some issues with these classes. I want to have contact. Okay, so yeah, you can reach out to us anything um, uh, to the ISTEM support. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, let's go. So, any more questions you have uh, on this uh, optical fiber modeling? Sir, actually, I lost the session while missing computing. Sorry, you? I lost the session, the previous session that was uh, targeted modes. Uh, but uh, for this session, I just uh, Initialize the parameters myself and uh, I'm able to compute the these actually. And it is different, like uh, you have uh, you have chosen different parameters, so I randomly chosen some parameters. That's fine. That's fine. That so you can choose your own parameters and you can check uh, the results. Uh, that should not be a problem. It's just the approach that's I important. Avoid the, how to avoid the hanging problem, like uh, how to confirm that if meshing is uh, right or not, something. So that we don't, is uh, like it's not a big concern over here. As you can see, the uh, you have to see most important is the mode. Okay, so mode is like very simple. So you just need to um, so your mesh should resolve the mode. Okay, so here you can see the uh, is the gradient is not, not that high. Okay, so you can see even this if I see the expression over here. So the gradient is not. I'm asking. Much. I'm asking about like uh, uh, before meshing before building mesh. What should we check so that it should not hang or it should not? Okay, hang? like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that uh, was my problem. The whole system gets hanged, and I need to check yeah, down yeah, the computer. Yeah, I can understand that. Uh, I can understand. So, uh, before doing the mesh, uh, you can do a quick check of uh, the number of degree of elements. In this mode analysis, it's never a problem. Okay, but when you do, like for example, over here, in this kind of structure. Where it is actually indeed a sorry. So in this kind of structure where it is indeed a wavelength dependent study. So how long you need to model, for example, okay. So you can do a quick uh, back of the envelope calculation. For example, what is the length? For example, the length is around uh, five micrometers and. Uh, uh, and over here, how many number of degree of element, uh, how many mesh elements would be required? Okay, based upon the wavelength, you can quickly calculate over here how many mesh elements would be required. Okay, and by that value, you kind of get an idea how much is this. Uh, if it is like if it uh, goes more than um, two millions or so, that means it's very high. Okay, so solving two million mesh elements would be like uh, very difficult. Okay, so uh, you can see that uh, or 1 million if itself is like very, very high. Okay, so. Uh, so you can do a back, quick back of the envelope uh, calculations. So, for example, if mesh element size is this much, that is lambda by 5 and your length is this much, how much mesh elements would be required? Okay, and if that goes more than 1 million, that means it's very going to, going to be significantly competition expensive. One more final thing that I wanted to show was the result part. So if you go right click on the results, I want to show you the arrows of how the electrical field is evolving in all these modes. So I create a 2D plot group and I create a arrow surface plot. And in this arrow surface plot, I increase the number of grid to 30 in both X and Y. Okay. And in the variables, I change to electrical field. So instead of EX, EY, I write, sorry, instead of HX, XY, I write EX, EY. And you can see now for all the modes, okay. You can see this for different, different modes, the 
so these are two orthogonal modes okay these are the two orthogonal modes and then you have the other modes can you guys uh, tell which are these modes t mode tm mode he mode some people who are working in this field may know about it okay so i did a quick google search and you can see over here now these are the modes so these are the different different modes that exist in the optical fibers okay okay looks good so that leads to the last part of the session uh, that is on 3d optical fibers or 3d web uh, waveguide structures so for that uh, so we have both example rib waveguide and slot waveguide so this is already available as a model Okay, you can see this blog, uh, silicon photonics blog, and over here we have model in the end. So this is a cross section again of uh, 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 this is a rib wave guide. This is a slot wave guide, and then your dispersion uh, diagram, uh, and then you have the 3D structures. You can see these are 3D structures. So this is a uh, rib uh, wave guide uh, or ridge wave guide, which is actually uh, propagating within the structure okay the approach even if it is 3d uh, it remains the same so you can see uh, the you can go to try it yourself section over here and open the model files i will share this section over here uh, this blog to you guys and you can just go through this blog and the models what i will do i will quickly show you that model uh, i will just use the rib web guide model and what you will see is that it's very much the same what we have done okay first thing is geometry so i first make a work plane okay so this is the work plane that i have created and then i extend it extrude it out in the third dimension so i make it around a, a 10 micrometer long uh, rib and then i apply the material properties so this is a core silicon material and then it is a over cladding silicon and then under cladding silicon that is SiO2 both uh, top and the bottom and then <clears throat> over here in the physics condition we have port boundary condition numeric port this is what in the first session we did numeric ports over here so numeric port on and then numeric port off of the other boundary over here okay and then uh, mesh physics control mesh okay so here we have used a specific type that is swept mesh instead of tetrahedral mesh we have used swept mesh that is because it is a high aspect ratio so one of the question was on high aspect ratio uh, geometry so this is a high aspect ratio so you can use a swept mesh and it beautifully covers the complete geometry rather than tet mesh it's very uh, complex so it's uh, especially when you're doing wave propagation along a particular direction then you can use swept mesh instead of tetrahedral mesh and then you do boundary mode analysis for the first port boundary mode analysis for the second port using the search mode around core okay and then frequency domain analysis right and then you get this nice uh, propagating waves through your domain or it web right okay you can do a lot of functions with this you can make it as a sensor and a lot of other functions you can actually build on top of it okay so you can explore these models the approach remains the same what we have done in 3d model or uh, 2d models so one question is can we combine single mode and multi-mode fiber together yes you can do that you can you should be able to do that there are many papers which are showing uh, to do those and one more example is uh, which is a very beautiful example that is a uh, fiber coupling which is what uh, is a very nice example which i always uh, like to show so yeah single mode fiber to fiber coupling okay this is a beautiful example 
you guys can see this example so it's how it couples uh, one fiber to another fiber uh, through air domain so those air domain you can do a lot of things in that air domain you can use it as a sensor you can see this is the core of the optical fiber and then this is the lens and then uh, it actually uh, uh, diverges out in this domain and then it again converges using this lens to the central core of this optical fiber a little bit involved model but uh, the approach is the same what uh, we have done okay looks good yeah so if you are using old version 5.5 uh, mesh contribution size is not no not available how can i reduce the mesh uh, you can use a user control mesh should not be a problem and just use uh, like uh, mesh max element size as uh, 1 micrometer or 2 micrometers should not be a problem okay looks good uh, do you have an example of block for photo detector photo detector it's a semiconductor part so yeah so there are many examples on photo detector but that is more towards uh, semiconductor that is uh, semiconductor physics it's not in the name of photo detector but it should be in the name of uh, <coughs> yeah photodiode okay so this example is there of photodiode and uh, uh, this is a good example because it couples wave optics and semiconductor physics so you first launch this electromagnetic wave and then it interacts with the semiconductor domain and then it absorbs uh, a particular energy and then it actually converts it into a voltage signal okay so that's why it's a beautiful multi-physics analysis over here so that will talk a little bit more in the uh, fifth day plasmonic excitation in nanoparticles we will talk about it i hopefully think tomorrow nanoparticles and plasmonic session is tomorrow so we will talk about it uh, tomorrow okay looks good uh, Okay, so we will take a break of half an hour and we will again come back at uh, 5 o'clock. If you have any more questions, uh, we can answer through those uh, sessions at 5 o'clock. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back for this uh, discussion session. So you can ask us the questions um, that you may have for optical waveguides, fibers, and couplers. So couplers I have not covered, um, but yeah, in the end I showed you fiber to fiber coupling. So yeah. Uh, I have already received few questions. Let me just try to answer them. Uh, how to model uh, sunlight radiation port? So, uh, sunlight radiation port, um, one way is to uh, do a sweep of the wavelength uh, because sunlight uh, uh, has all the visible as well as IR, <coughs> near IR and far IR. So, you need to do a huge uh, a range of uh, sweep of uh, frequencies or wavelengths. Um, yeah, so that is with respect to optics, it's that, but it ray optics, as we will see in the final day, there's an option to use sunlight as a, as a uh, launch of uh, rays. So in rays, ray optics is an option like sunlight and uh, with which you can talk about what is the latitude and longitude of your uh, of your uh, system uh, and the throughout the day for example if it's a solar concentrator for example or just solar panel so throughout the day how much it is uh, changing um, how much angle it is changing so all, all of those things can be modeled <coughs> so i think uh, i can share one example with you guys if you're interested so that example is uh, tara hotel so you can see this is a uh, so it's a uh, one of the uh, ray optic example of uh, solar radiations. As I said, that op optics can be modeled uh, with or photons can be modeled or the light can be modeled as a photon as a wave. So if you consider it as a wave, then you use wave optics module. If you consider it as a photon, you use it as a ray optics module. Okay, so next question is any information on selecting the interference of modes? I want to know about interference of modes inside fiber. So, uh, yeah, so one of the thing is uh, interference or mode overlap. So uh, there are few examples of how to calculate mode overlap. So what I would recommend is that you go to the papers and research in the bottom of this uh, console website. And there you can uh, search for this uh, <coughs> mode overlap. So there are many people who have published the paper uh, using COMSOL how to do mode overlap. It's very much uh, similar to the mode interference. So it's a little bit more involved. It's not that straightforward. You need to use a with sol operator. With the with sol operator, you need to do so. What I will recommend is that you try it out. If you are unable to get it through, let me know. I can actually help you guys to get to this mode overlap. So I just shared you a uh, few of the uh, papers which are talking about uh, mode overlaps. One more question is, is there a provision to see pulse propagation in COMSOL, especially fiber? Fiber is kind of a, you can see this, uh, this example over here. So you assume uh, this is a rich uh, waveguide, optical waveguide. Sorry, it's a rib waveguide, uh, optical waveguide. And you can see this wave propagation within this optical waveguide. Uh, that is a rib waveguide. But optical fibers is like, uh, uh, <coughs> you can try to use the same approach. I don't think that we have any example of 3D optical waveguide. 3D optical fiber, but using the same approach, you can actually uh, create a uh, pulse propagation 
uh, policy is a little bit challenging because uh, uh, it's time domain. Okay, so the way to proceed would be to do a frequency domain and then use FFT to convert it into a pulse. Uh, one of the example of doing so would be TDR example, so time domain reflectometry. So, so this uh, concept is uh, uh, okay. Let me just check one here. So TDR that is time domain reflectometry. So this concept is from RF background, but uh, it actually <clears throat> is a very interesting thing to do in uh, wave optics as well so so you can see over here we are trying to launch a pulse uh, through this uh, uh, strip microstrip patch on a silicon <coughs> wafer not wafer uh, silicon uh, substrate okay and you can see this so you can see this is a lump port that you are exciting but in our case it would be port condition so there are two discontinuities. So we try to launch a pulse from here and then because of the discontinuities, there is some reflection and we try to see the understand the reflection. So you can see this is the uh, because of this uh, discontinuities, there is a reflection of first discontinuity, second discontinuity and then termination is also there. So, uh, so there are different ways to model. Uh, one of the approaches this approach okay you model a frequency domain analysis and then using fft you convert it into time domain so with this approach uh, you can kind of model pulses with a very long optical structures but yeah this is a little bit involved approach it's not that straightforward <clears throat> ideally what one can do is uh, use a time domain analysis but uh, again uh, doing time domain analysis is okay in a 2d structure like this okay so you can try with a 2d structure but not to uh, but doing it in 3d is like really computationally very expensive okay so first you can try to do with uh, time domain 2d structure over here and then if you are successful then and you have a very good uh, high resource computation uh, at your place then you can use it in 3d structure as well You can also unmute and uh, ask your questions. You can introduce yourself and then you can ask the question. <clears throat> yeah, so one of the question is, uh, so One of the question is on how to choose graded refractive index of the core of the optical fiber. So for example, over here, what I do is a, is a <clears throat> simple refractive index. So this is completely uh, simple. Uh, means if you see, I right click on the results to the plot group. And over here, I go to surface plot and I plot for the refractive index. Okay. So this is a code for the or a variable name for the refractive index and you can see that it's kind of a if i make it height expression again so it's something like this okay so in the center core it's around 1.5 and on the uh, cladding it's around one you can also make it as a graded kind of thing so for example how do you do that would be um, there's different ways to do that let me quickly think of the ways um, one of the easy way would be to use piecewise <clears throat> okay so you start with spatial variation let me just think about it uh, you start with uh, what is this around 5 to minus 5 so you start with uh, what is this uh, 5 or 50 5 times 10 power 0.5 okay so this is around 5 
looks good. So what I'm going to going to use this uh, <coughs> five e minus seven to zero. I'm going to use to be one point two five. Okay, from sorry not to zero. Uh, maybe I can use uh, two point five e minus seven as one point two five. And then from 2.5 to 0, I use 1.5. Then from 0 to minus 2.5, I use 1.25. And then minus 2.5 to minus 5, I use, oh sorry, this has to be also 1.5, 1.25. Arguments is in meters, function is one. Then put argument as x doesn't matter. Function piece by is to give the Let's duplicate it just to try out something. Okay, so Zero to two point five. So you can see this is the kind of a gradient that I have used. So from zero to two point five, it would be one point two five. Okay. From two point five to five, it would be around one point five. Okay. So I can use this function PW one to define my core refractive index okay so so i can actually add one more so it's a little bit more involved so uh, you can actually there could be a simple way as well to think about it uh, I don't know. So this is not working. Uh, let me think about it. Look, anything else? Uh, okay, yeah. So there are different ways. So one of the other way would be to duplicate this, and I make it uh, slab of. Okay, not this one. I make it half of this, for example. Okay, and then I again duplicate it, make it uh, one by four, for example. Okay, and then I uh, <coughs> for core I apply different different. So this is my core over here and I apply it for example, so this is my second core and I apply it for example over here 1.02. So it's not the actual part over here but 1.05 multiplication. Then I duplicate this and I apply it to my central part. Okay, And I here I apply instead of 1.05, 1 1.1. Okay. So here you can see my cladding is out, 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 outside cladding is around one. That is n clad. It's my outer core, n core, and then my inner core of 1.10 times n core. You can put whatever value you want to put, and then this is uh, even the final one that's inside. It's around 1.1 that we multiply. So here it becomes a graded refractive index. The approach remains the same. You can solve the model and then see which kind of mode that may propagate. So now you can see this. Uh, this is the wave propagation through this. 
you can see this is a now it's not a flat surface but it's a <coughs> gradient refractive gradient so you can see so it's not a flat surface uh, straight refractive index okay you can just see one here also so the refractive index is actually varying it's kind of graded refractive index okay i hope that answers your question so again there are different ways to do that you can also do it with pace wise but it will take some more time to work on that so i thought about a geometry based uh, graded refractive index i hope that answers the question okay we have a uh, lot of questions uh, next question is where to input equations like gaussian beam vortex or higher order basel function basel beam function uh, for gaussian beams uh, you can use as i discussed yesterday uh, if you remember we use instead of full beam full field you can use scattered field okay and in this instead of user field you can use a gaussian beam okay so here you can see a gaussian beam now you might not be even happy with what it's done over here so what you can do is you can write your own equation as well okay and you can use scattered field and then use user defined and you can write your own equations so based upon any bessel equation bessel beam equation you can just put it over here and then you can see the propagation like we see in the first day uh, if you remember i have used uh, uh, an equation for the plane wave propagation okay so similar kind of basel beam equations you can put over here and you can see the propagation okay there are a lot of examples uh, with this scattered field so you can just go and uh, for example you go to this model library okay in this model library application gallery available in comsol website uh, model and application library and this search for scattered field uh, formulation optics okay, so you can see some of the examples using this okay so nano rods is one of the example we are using gaussian means so you can also add gaussian okay, so you can see this nano rod example so here we are using gaussian beam so gaussian beam is at a brewster angle yeah so you have any questions uh or anyone okay so next question by surjit was uh, for kilometer long uh, optical fiber how to select the dimension uh, it's very difficult to model kilometer long wave propagation within optical fiber you can still model uh, uh, Wave propagation, not wave propagation, but kind of thermal analysis or uh, uh, structural deformation on optical fiber, uh, which is laying under uh, underground re uh, regimes. So, because of which there could be a change in uh, mode of propagation. So, those things you can model, but very difficult to model kilometer long uh, optical wave propagation through optical fibers. Okay. Okay, so uh, one question by Suman on uh, PML regarding PML. If we use PML, how thick it should be? And uh, <clears throat> so, you can mute yourself. Uh, you can unmute yourself when you want to ask your question. So if we use PM, yeah, so how, how thick it should be and how should I know how much width is required for a specific geometry? Uh, okay, so usually the thickness of the PML is not that a big concern as I said yesterday. So even if you see in this uh, graph that I told about it in mesh, uh, which is that. Yeah, so if you see this one over here, so even this is, it could be lambda or lambda by two or lambda by four thickness of PML. It's not, it, it's not a big matter of concern because internally what COMSOL does is that it stretches this domain. So this, this thickness that is, is available, maybe it's lambda by two. 
but it actually internally it stretches itself to like thousand times of lambda by two. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether it's lambda by two or lambda by four. It's not that much of concern. Okay, so you can just try it out with couple of items, but usually lambda by two, lambda by four is sufficient. The thickness of PML. Okay, so not much difference would happen. So people also do this mesh as uh, a PML thickness study. So just change this PML thickness and then see how much is the variation that you get uh, on your results. Okay, looks good. Uh... <coughs> Can we decide laser diode is in COMSOL? Uh, it's one of the questions by Minakshi. Um, laser diode, I mean, uh, laser diode is itself a kind of a very highly multi-physics uh, uh, system. For example, whether you want to model the uh, cavity inside the laser, uh, you want to model the semiconductor part or the wave propagation that happens, uh, Gaussian beam propagation that happens once the light exits the laser. Okay, so if you are interested in modeling the light which is once it is exiting this laser then you can use the wave optics model that is gaussian beam propagation uh, nano rod model if you're looking for uh, modeling cavities so then there is a option uh, in uh, ray optics okay so using the ray optics module you can model two mirror cavity laser cavity laser cavity with a thin lens uh, bow tie laser cavity even with uh, Optics model, you can understand the modes of uh, laser cavities. Okay, so you can, uh, and then um, I think this these are two things that uh, are possible. Semiconductor is also possible, but I'm not sure to what extent. Next question by uh, Shanavaz is: uh, Can can't we write the n in the form of expression of the code within the code? Yes, you can write that as well means uh, when you're talking about the diffractive index as a function of uh, mm, uh, in this expression analytical expression you can write uh, your expression as a function of y so this is the y that you have over here and then you extend it to this uh, z direction so you can actually write it in terms of whatever expression that you have also okay. Uh, as a function of radius of code, yeah. yeah. So right now it's nothing like a radius. Uh, it's a kind of a longitudinal thing, but yeah, you can write it as a function of radius of the code as well. Should not be a problem. Okay, looks good. Can we directly get fiber dispersion from Comsol? Uh, yeah, you can. Means uh, one of the example that we did today. So this is a fiber uh, dispersion. So if you're interested, this example is already there the example of fiber simulator uh, in this example uh, dispersion graph is already there how to create a dispersion graph for a fiber okay so that is uh, i will share this with you guys uh, okay so this is uh, an app that they have created uh, using a console model so there's an option in console where you can create an app as well okay so we just open this app, Fiber Simulator app. So uh, it has a lot of things with fibers. Um, it has the, uh, just let me open. So this, this you can see if you click on open, you open the model file and you have, you know, all, all the equations that they have used. If you run the app, you actually open the app, which is kind of a very nice uh, GUI with which you can actually see the results. 
okay so this is a core cladding uh, we can change the uh, core and the cladding what is the minimum and maximum wavelength number of modes that you want to analyze and once you click on compute it will give you the mode field diameter uh, mode field uh, group delay uh, dispersion attenuation you can create a nice report out of it also so all the models that we have created for there also you can nice easily create a report and uh, in the form of a word file or an html file I, I can just show you quickly after this uh, plotting the dispersion graphs for this optical fiber yeah so you can see this uh, this is a mode field mode field diameter so mode field diameter is nothing but uh, as a change in the wavelength what is the mode field diameter so now so how it is calculated you can just open the model and see uh, the equations that they have used so you can calculate the group delay okay for all the modes and then you have the dispersion so this is a dispersion graph coefficient as a function of wavelength okay again you can open that model and see how they have calculated the dispersion then you have the attenuation attenuation as a function of wavelength okay so this is attenuation db per kilometer so for attenuation there is already one uh, variable available damp z okay so that is a variable that is already available so you can use that so this is a, a refractive index real and imaginary part of the optical fiber so you can see this is a single mode uh, you can want multi mode also is possible uh, yeah that's good so you can see if you open the model file now you can see how uh, each of these uh, have been evaluated this is the app you can toggle from between the model as well as uh, application builder by clicking on this one okay and you can see over here the dispersion coefficient uh, okay so in derived values it would be the dispersion coefficient so this is the equation that they have used and you know, they're actually calculating, calculating this gvd and this gvd is defined somewhere over here in variable section okay so you can see over here uh, yeah it will just just take some more time just take more time and just try to absorb all these things okay so here you can see you have mode field diameter you have propagation constant at um, so you need to do a gradient of uh, um, beta as a function of uh, I means over this uh, group velocity for dispersion coefficient so i think that's what is done over here just a uh, slope is what you have calculated it's not that difficult uh, equation just uh, write it on a book uh, and then try to understand what it is written all these things uh, which solve uh, ef uh, efw is nothing but the <clears throat> interface that we are using which solve is an operator name uh, so if you don't understand anything just open this console reference manual so it's available in c drive program files program files console 60 multi physics okay document somewhere document pdf console reference manual okay in console multi physics console reference manual so you just get hold of this com com console reference manual and just search for with sol or anything that you are unable to get okay and here you can see uh with sol operator is there uh, so with sol is a very um interesting operator okay uh, you can do a lot of things uh, with with solve it's kind of a hardwired picking and placing operator uh, so but you can learn more about this uh, in the console reference manual so it is only for advanced users uh, if you are looking for a, a beginners kind of thing so i won't recommend you to use with solve it's only once you get a hold of it uh, then you go ahead and use with solve Console, console reference manual is also available in this file uh, help documentation. 
So either you go to this search in the folder or you go into this document section. So somewhere over here, this reference, you can see over here, the reference manual is available easily. Okay, looks good. So any more question? Uh, yeah, so yeah, thanks Surjit for your comments. Uh, yeah, the course looks to be interesting, so thanks a lot. Yeah, so yeah, means uh, looking forward for light matter interaction course. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we can think about it. Uh, if uh, in we we can do it in collaboration uh, with the uh, CSI or. Very perhaps in with ISTEM. Thanks for your feedback. Okay, looks good. So, are there any more questions? If there are no more questions, then uh, we can stop the session and meet tomorrow. Ah, Doctor Uttam, we can close the session. You can. Okay. You can. Uh, Looks good. So I will, yeah, I will end the session. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you.